All right, well, I've been uh, doing some work on some of my other cars, but uh, back at her. I dragged in this 8.8, but I'm not exactly sure if it's a posi. Uh, I'm gonna try to decode the tags. It's not doing posi things, so. <laughs> if I turn one wheel, the other one's not turning, so I'm kind of taking for granted it's open. So I want to see what's going on inside of there. We'll figure stuff out. If it's not, I might just try to find a different diff quick. It's not like I'm in a big rush that I need it. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to read the tags. I'm thinking it's like it's got 388s or 373s, but I don't know. Once I decode it, I'll know better. And then I'll decide whether I'm going to order parts for this or not. Or I'm just going to swap in a different diff. Kind of nice to have the same bolt pattern front the rear, but whatever. Still working on this stuff but I go into working on everything from yesterday was a trailer thrash building a trailer or fixing one to today fixing an umbrella <laughs> the wind caught her a little good kind of bent her up but I did have like somebody gave me a single lake pipe which turned out is the same size so we cut her off and now we got a shiny bit down by the lake. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get that set up and come back and look at this. Um, I did open it up. I checked the gears. It's uh, got 373s. It does have a limited slip, so I'm not sure what's going on. But anyways, because it's whatever it is, just confirming what's in it. So whatever, I'm gonna try it out, see if it works. So I'm just gonna re-glue this pan, slam it together, and start cutting all this junk off. I gotta take the pads off too, because A, they're a little wide, and B, they're just, they gotta go, I don't know, one way or, it's like half, half a width off on both of them, so. Not like it's a big deal, I gotta put them on so we can set that pinion angle and stuff anyways, so. Anyways, I'm uh, gonna go put that back quick make the wife happy and then uh, get back on this. Well, threw the diff up on the stand. I uh, got the cover in. I haven't tightened the back cover yet. Uh, and next plan here is I'm just going to cut all the brackets off. It's about all I'm feeling to do today. We got some nice weather out, so kind of going to go enjoy that as much as a feller can. And uh, possibly later tonight we'll come back and probably clean it up. Grind it down, clean it up a bit so I can get it ready to weld perches on. But uh, between then and just stuffing it back into the car, fixing that one spring, and uh, see where everything fits.
been a few days. I've been screwing around with everything but the car. I've actually been doing like some welding for a buddy of mine, a friend of mine. We've been doing some uh, boat prop repair, getting some practice on welding aluminum. Uh, I'm not getting a lot better, but <laughs> I'm getting more practice anyways. I haven't gotten too far other than cleaning this up a bit. So uh, what I'd like to do though is just scooch this over and uh, get the diff sitting in there. See how I uh, pop it on a set of perches. I did get my blocks and my U-bolts, but I have to come up with a way. Uh, let me find my U-bolts. I got my kit, which is whatever. But it's got all my U-bolts, everything. And then these blocks. These are what always come, these stupid hollow blocks. And they're fine. The only problem I have is on these cars, you'll set it up, but you always want the axle back further, usually about like that or something, to get it more centered in the wheel wheel. So, uh, what I'm gonna have to come up with is just like a, a plate so I can put the locating pin here and have <clears throat> another one in the center here to which uh, can offset this. So when I wanna put it over here, let's say, it gives me the right spacing of the wheel in this, the wheel wheel, I guess, if that's right. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to fix that side quick. And uh, I guess I'll slide the axle in and see how things fit. We'll just do a loose fit with this thing before I make the plate. But I want to at least see how everything fits in there. Well, unfortunately, this is a lot of stuff that I thought might happen is happening. We got some clearance issues. So I do want to run this. I got the wrong U-bolts. They're clearly not long enough and they're not big enough for this axle. But not to worry because I don't think I'm going to use it being that uh, I don't have disc brake clearance between it and the frame. She's... Uh, not so good. Which you could clear up. Then the second problem is the... Uh, I knew these were offset, so that's not an issue. But being that I'm going to lower the car, I'm going to have to start cutting the floor and the tunnel up. And that's... It's too nice to start doing all that. And I don't want to. So, well, I did a whole bunch of work cleaning this up. Only to not use it. But at least it's ready for the next car that I ever want to use this diff in. Uh, the kid did wreck a blazer, so it does have a 10 bolt in that one. Not ideal, I guess, but I'll use it. It's what I got. And uh, we'll put this one on the shelf for something else. It's uh, just not going to work for this. Like, it would work, but it's just too much work. I'd have to, like, pinch the frame rails. If this was a, a drum brake unit, it would probably work okay. Now, I know people would say I can use, like, two short axles and get this thing centered. But that would just cause all kinds of chaos. Because I do like to have the car a little bit lowered. If it was stock height, I guess I'd be okay. But I don't really want that. I kind of 
want the car a little lower a little lower stance so uh, oh well story of my life try something doesn't work move on <laughs> all right well anyways I'm gonna get this out throw it in the pile with my other diffs and uh, go grab that blazer one and drag it over here I know it's gonna work fine I'll just have to find a posi or something for it hopefully it's got some good gears in it I guess we'll find out Dropped off my 188. It's sitting in my monk's pile of diffs. This is the uh, 4x4 uh, S10 one that I'm gonna go try to use because we just got it out of a vehicle and I probably should have done better care taking it out because I think the emergency brakes, everything were good in it. <laughs> Anyways, amongst that we have a lot of like some blown up 10 bolts and some Ford stuff, some weird Ford stuff. I think a lot of these are seven fives, which are probably fine and some low horsepower stuff or just drivers. And then some really old stuff. And some stuff I don't know why I still have. I think that's an eight two. Yeah, I think I have another. I got more junk than I remember here. Yeah, look at that one. Oh, that's probably two wheel drive S10 though. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, look at this. I got a Camaro right there. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to use this one because it probably has better gears. All right, well, I dragged in. This is a Blazer diff. And then I was showing you guys that Camaro diff, and I was going to go this route, and then for some reason I decided I was going to measure the back. And I realized this is only a 7.5 inch pinion or ring gear. Whereas this is an eight and a half. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go with this one only because I have better gear selections with junk cars around here that I can put gears in. Being that this came from a Camaro, I'll guarantee it has like just 308s. Like it's got a really crappy gear. Uh, that one might have what I want, but it's it's a smaller center section. I don't know, it's, it might not be up to snuff for what I wanna do. I'll use these all day long if I was putting a stock LS or anything like that because like these trucks came with 4.3s and whatever else and that's fine. Some of the bigger cars came with the 7.5 and they had V8s in them and things like that. So there's nothing wrong with it. I just thinking I'm putting a little more power. I'd rather have this setup so I have a bigger gear selection. Again, I can grab a, a ring and pinion out of a junk truck there and I can throw it in there and get some 373s. So I'm going to go this route. I figured before I threw this out, I would show you the differences. Everybody says these, at least that's what I always tell everybody, is the uh, Blazer 4x4 S10s is the perfect uh, swap. Like it's the replacement for the Camaro. And now I've actually done some measuring and you know, it is like the best swap for a car like this where you're uh, just wanting to put an open drive in it and you need a diff for the back. I would say because they're so readily available that like the Camaros are starting to get really scarce around here. so. These diffs are getting harder to come by. Uh, but these, you can find tons of them still in all the 4x4 S10s. That said, if you go mounting face to mounting face, because if you do back plates, that doesn't mean much other than trying to clear your frame, in my eyes. You gotta know where your wheel mounts. So anyways, I think, don't quote me, but there's a difference. Like this mounting face to here, I think is 60 and a half inches and the S10, the 4x4, it's 59 and 3 quarter. I don't know how that would play into the car. These are the ones everybody used to always use. They're getting harder to come by. This is my go-to for what I'm goofing with on this car with the Turbo LS. I think I'm just going to go this route because I have. I know uh, a 9 inch is the better way to go, but I don't have one of those. Uh, and let alone they're usually too wide. You'd have to narrow them and stuff. And It's just, I don't know. This will be plenty strong for what I'm doing with it. I'm not running a very big tire, so uh, the plan is not really to hook up. <laughs> so I just had these to show the difference. I'm actually gonna take this one off, throw it off, put it back into the pile. I'm gonna clean this one up 
and then I guess I'll have to, I probably have parts for this because they're so common. So I think the drums are the same as the, uh, the four by and all that jazz. So, but either way, I'll save this for something else. This is the one I'm gonna use. Because again, I know I can change my gears out. And uh, yeah, that's basically the difference between a 4x4 S10 and this. If you do it the disc brake stuff, I think the mounting flakes are still the same, but inboard you have the calipers like I had the problem with the 88. Is in a stock height car, it'd probably be fine, but I want to put some lowering blocks in it, and then there's a chance through the suspension travel that I'm going to smoke a caliper on the frame, so I don't want to deal with that. So, yeah, anyways. Now I'm going to strip this one, get it set up into here, and uh, hopefully we can drop it on the ground and see what she looks like. See how off I am here. I guess I didn't show these plates. I didn't have any plates to put underneath the, uh, the uh, whatever you want to call it, the spring. The ones I had were too narrow and it was causing the U-bolts to spread out wide. So I had to get them, step them up a bit. But all I did was some quarter inch plate. I uh, punched all the holes out and the offset spacing. That's how far back I moved the diff from the center of here to here. And uh, I put it in the press brake and I just bent the flanges, like I bent some flanges on it just so the plate doesn't fold on itself. It's similar to like an original style plate. But, and all I did is, yeah, like I say, I just bent it. I have a simple jig that I made that I was able to just press it in there. I just have a simple die like this. And then I was just pushed down on the plate and give it a little swank. And then she's uh, she's good to go. Figure I'd explain that a little bit before I stab the wheels on. Okay, I would have sped that up really fast because I don't want to punish you folks watching this twice over again. You'll have to excuse how uh, noisy it is because it's my form of air conditioning just running all my fans. <laughs> uh, but we got the depth sitting in there. Nothing is permanent because I still have to make that spacer block to move the bolt pin on the bottom. Right now it's just loosely sitting on there. I just want this here so I can throw some wheels on it and we'll sit it on the ground. We can roll her out and uh, just see what it looks like. Because I'm not 100% uh, how I'm doing the front yet. But I want to see where the wheel should be to uh, justify how I'm doing this. Like I know I'm pretty much going to weld it in, but I'll need to make some spacers and stuff. Seeing where this sits, I could cut this off, but it won't sit any more flat. Because up here it's already sitting on the frame. So my guess is it is what it is. So I could cut this and figure a way to scab it on. But for the most part, a feller could just bolt this back in again. The big thing's in the back. See, this is where the original mount was. I could put a shim and bolt it, but up here I can weld it. So, I'm going to do a combo of both. Why? I don't know, but just because I can. Anyways, I am going to throw some wheels on the back. And uh, we can set it on the ground and see what she looks like. Roll her up ahead here. See what the overall look is. The sense is whether I should move this wheel back or not.
All right, nothing is permanent, but you can see moving that wheel back like two inches or so puts it like nice and perfect in the wheel well. The uh, front one, eh, it's kind of hard to see on film. She looks a wee bit forward, but I don't think it's got to go much back because I could have put it in the stock location, I guess, but I always feel the wheels are a little far back on them. So it's pretty close. Not sure what she'll do when she lowers out, but it's got to go back a hair. This is basically what I had to see. I'm going to loosen up the clamps and stuff and kind of knock it back a little bit. I'm just not 100% sure what happens when the car's got weight on it if the wheel will go back because I do want to lower it. So most of the time the suspension kind of comes back a wee bit. So I'd rather have that. Um, yeah. Up here you can see, right? how nice easy you can just bolt that sucker there you could bolt that sucker there and then just make the mount in the front and call her a day there's enough tabs on both sides that you could uh, bolt on either side of the frame under the pinch weld like the stock car was but I may loosen this give it a quick little tap see if my wheels go about where I want and then uh, we'll play it from there I gave everything a little tap back. I think it looks good. It's kind of hard to tell because it looks dark in this corner, but that looks pretty centered to me. I'm pretty happy with it. I will leave that. Mind you, I haven't done anything yet as far as squaring it up or nothing at this point. Uh, same with the back. I got to deal with some stuff there. I think. Uh, I know this is kind of a crappy update, just tons of work on the diff and it's not even a permanent fixture yet. But, you gotta stop them somewhere I guess. So I think this is where I'm gonna leave this one. I think next round I'm gonna start bout in the front there, try to get her buttoned up. I've ordered some U-joints, so I could pretty much make the clip solid in the front. Uh, I'm not too worried about the diff at this point. I'll have to order brakes and stuff because I ordered everything for that 8.8. Which is whatever, cool. I'll use that somewhere else. And, uh, but they'll try to get this clip and the steering working, I think, next round here. To which then we can start trying to, after that, get the motor mocked up. Which does remind me I should get my transmission in and get that thing built so I can put it together with that thing. But, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And, uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.